Here's just a really quick chalk paint tutorial. So this little chair was actually mine when I was a teenager. It was oak. And a couple years ago, I spray painted it with Rust-Oleum, um, one of their grays, country gray maybe. And my daughter's been using it in her room, but she was done with it. Brought it downstairs and I wanna use it in my kitchen, but I don't like this color. It's a cute color, I just, everything's white, creamy white in my kitchen. So, I am going to paint it. And I'm using, for the first time, Country Chic paint. They sent me a few samples. This is crinoline, and it is not a super bright white. It is more of a creamy white or an old white, if you're familiar with Annie Sloan. It is raining outside today, which is why I'm in my sunroom. My family hates when I paint inside, but I'm sorry, I wanna get this done. Oh yeah, isn't that a pretty color? When I chalk paint, I don't do a really heavy first coat, and you wanna make sure that you're double checking that you don't have any drips because those are really hard to get off once your paint dries. So you can see I'm sort of going over that edge but not really painting the edge yet. If you do a thinner coat of chalk paint, it'll dry much, much faster and you'll be moving on to your next coat even quicker. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish painting this chair with one coat and then I'll show you what it looks like. And it always looks like you've ruined your piece, but the magic is all in the second and third if you need it coat. I really like how this is going on, but obviously I'm gonna need at least one more coat. That is the case when you cover a dark color with a light color. Okay, I have my first coat of white paint, and as you can see, it does not look good at all, but that's okay, because you wanna do a light coat on chairs, remember I said, so that you don't get a bunch of blobs on your spindles, because those are the hardest part to paint. And, well, there's a little spot I missed. That's okay, I'll grab that the next go around. Now, if I was painting a table, it's probably already dry, yeah. It's dry and I could go ahead and do a second coat, but because this is a chair and you know I didn't get to do the bottoms of these spindles, what I'm going to do before I paint a second coat is I'm gonna flip the chair over, get anything that I missed from the bottoms of those spindles, and then I'll flip it back over and do a second coat. So now that my chair is flipped over, you can see just exactly what you missed the first go round and you can just touch that up. Now it's it's not a big deal because who's going to be flipping your chairs over to see if you painted the bottom, right? But this is just a personal thing for me. I like to feel like my chair's finished. So I do like to make sure that the bottom looks pretty too. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this and then we're gonna flip it back over do the exact same thing, paint the chair again from the front, and hopefully two coats are gonna do it. Okay, I just finished up the second coat. It's looking pretty good, but I'm a little picky and I know I'm gonna want a third coat. If you're saying right about now, what on earth, I would never do three coats, then you don't want to hand brush a chair, especially a spindle chair. Go ahead and get yourself a spray paint. I just haven't found a white chalk paint, spray paint that I really love the color. So I'm gonna let this sit overnight and dry. My fingers are starting to cramp up and um, I'll get back to it tomorrow. So I've taken my brush and I've just wrapped really tightly some saran wrap around it and I'm gonna stick it in my fridge this way I don't have to clean it today. Um, I can wait until I'm completely done painting it. Okay, I have completely finished painting my chair and I actually took it outside and using my palm sander, I gave it some 
heavy sanding. Now, I don't recommend using a palm sander if you just want to do a light distressing because as you can see, with very little effort, it knocks off all the paint right down to the bare wood. But that's the look I wanted on this piece. I wanted it to look like it was old and roughed up a little bit. So that's what I did. But like I said, normally I would just take um, a foam sanding block and just go over the piece like that just to smooth it and to get some distressing on the edges like this. You can see that I completely miss these last two spindles. They don't have any distressing on them at all. So I'm gonna have to take my chair back outside and remedy that. But other than that, this project's done. And I am not going to cover this with a wax or a poly. I find that often when I do that over white um, chalk painted furniture that the color does not stay white. It turns slightly amber and I don't want that. I love the color of this chair and I don't mind if it gets some more of these types of dings from being used daily because that, like I said, is the look I'm after. So I hope this was helpful and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. If you've ever painted a spindle chair, you know just how tricky it can be. But I have a couple tricks that will help you get these spindles painted in no time. First of all, make sure you're using a really good quality brush. And what you do is you're just barely going to dip your paint into the brush. And you can even wipe some of it off so you have very little paint. Then you're going to come over to the spindle and just do this back and forth. Go around it. Now I have tried to paint spindles all different ways and normally I would do this, but then you don't get the paint in those little cracks and the paint just doesn't cover completely. But if you can do this, I don't know what you call this. It is so much easier and you can just work your way around the spindle inside and outside and then do the front and just go back and forth like that and you should be able to get your spindles covered in a coat or two. Now